you see a glorious 2024? Do you see a 2024 where the power of God is working? Do you see a 2024 of evidence? 2024 of answers? 2024 of good news? 2024 of joy? 2024 of open heaven? Can I ask you, how will you shout? How will you scream? How will you testify? Is that all you will do? Is that all you will do? Is that all you will do? Give the Lord a loud shout! Wherever you are, would you open your scriptures to the book of Luke chapter 14. You know, some neighbors don't understand why you're shouting. <laughs> Woo! Hey! Hey! Hey, hey! It's January I'm looking at all. I've already seen what the Lord has done. I'm looking into February. I'm seeing all the celebrations. I'm seeing all the time. I'm seeing March. I'm seeing April. I'm seeing May. I'm seeing June. I'm seeing July, August, September, October, November, December. Give the Lord a loud shout. What a God. Mm. Open your Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 14. And we are going to read from verse 31. And we'll read from verse 31 to 33. We're going to read in the book of Luke chapter 14 from verse 31 to 33. As it is the custom of this house for us to stand for the reading of God's word. Can we all be upstanding and at the count of three, let us read together one to three. Or what king going to make war against another king? Sit it not down first and consult it whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Or else while the other is yet a way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desired conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you, that forsaketh not all that he had, he cannot be my disciple. Hallelujah. Now, can I ask that we read that scripture in message translation, if you don't mind? Um, message translation. Yes, sir. Can we read together, church, if you can see one to go? Or can you imagine a king going into battle against another king without first deciding whether it is possible with his 10,000 troops to face the 20,000 troops of the other. Uh -huh. If he decides he can't, won't he send an emissary and work out a truce? Simply put, if you're not willing to take what is dearest to you, whether plants or people, and kiss it goodbye, you can't be my disciple. Our Father, we ask you that in the next few minutes that you make your word and your will known unto us let there be none of any man but all of you let your amen thunder louder amen. would you take your seat in the presence of God so my assignment in this service is a very brief one a glorious 2020 a 2024 rather uh, people of God we can't do 2024 without understanding the place of wisdom in what we're doing an amazing critical scripture i love the scripture and it says that um uh, let me let, let me narrate the scripture in my own words and my own terms you know um a certain king that wanted to do battle with another king but what he had was ten thousand ten thousand soldiers and the king the other one coming to fight him is 20 had twenty thousand. he said would he not first of all sit down and think about it first and just say is it possible um, that I can actually come to a truce. First of all, let me consider, can I win this war? Or should I make peace? So that at the end of the day, it will not work against me. 
I have five thoughts to share with you from this scripture. I need you to understand. He has 10,000. His opponent has 20,000. He believes in his capacity. However, he must seek knowledge to be sure if he can or cannot. Just in case he can't, then again, he will seek for a truce. You know the conclusion of it? My first thought, as we've entered 2024, choose your battle. Did you hear what I just said right now? It is not every dog that is barking that deserves a response. Choose your battle. There are too many, oh, my kid are sober. There are too many people that want you to make them relevant by fighting you. Choose your battle. There are too many distractions that come when you are a man of purpose. Don't look around to reply them. Choose your battle. If it does not tie into your purpose, ignore them. Did you hear what I just said? He said, me said, we said, and then they said, not this year. Did you hear what I just said? Choose your battle. Don't, don't, don't. They, listen, don't come and over explain. You will explain, tire. No evidence. Do you understand what I'm saying? Choose your battle. Sit back and tell yourself, is it worth it? They say you this one, that one. They say you are this way. You say, I mean, this year, it's not a year to sit back and say, you know, they say I'm short. Please take a look at the mirror. Are you short? There are people sometimes when you are really short and they said you are short. But let me tell you the mindset. Anybody taller than you is very tall. Anybody shorter than you is too short. As they are looking at you like this, you are the perfect height. You say, I am short. Then you go back and say, is it not because of these useless parents that gave back to me? They couldn't even find any way to include the gene of tallness. My mother is short. My father is short. I know. Why don't you choose your battle? Let me say something to you. You see, you are not in good terms with your boss. It's not for your own good. Choose your battle. There are people you don't fight. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. Choose your battle. Pastor, you don't know what they did. They offended me. They did this other one. They did this other. Sir, auntie, choose your battle. He said, this is 2020. Look at what this king did. He said, make a check. A fit fight. I, can I do this? If I no fit, make her go beg him. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. Make her go beg him. Choose your battle. I want to say it again because if you look through 2023, what happened with most of us is that you fought battles that were not yours. You, you engaged in things that you shouldn't engage in. You, you were involved in people's lives that were never going to be involved in yours. You kept calling, you kept trying to be there for people who never would hold you. They wouldn't even burn an eyelid if anything happened to you. Choose your path. And guess what? Make your circle smaller. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. When it is over, it is over. Don't flog a dead horse. Do you understand what I'm saying? When people show you their true colors, believe them. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Help me preach to your neighbor, say, choose your battles. Say it again to your neighbor like you say, choose your battles. Tell your neighbor, this is 2024. Choose your battles. Wherever there are things that are not, look, look, there are too many things that you need to battle through. Battle through to the realization of your destiny. 
the distinction, the promises of God, the purpose of God, alignment to the will of God, battling besetting sin, being able to push through to the next level of glory that God has shown you, all of the promises of God over your life, and then you are sitting down, you are saying you are not talking to somebody. I, I cannot, I will never speak to that person again in my entire life. In no quam. Is that the kind of battle you want to fight in 2024? I don't have time. That one would drain you emotionally. It would drain you, you know. I, know. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. The Bible says, he that dines with the devil. Um, I say Bible say. They, they say um, uh, in English, he that dines with the devil uh, should dine so with a, a, a long spoon. But me, I am suggesting, don't even be on that table. Do you understand? Yes, keep them, keep them where they truly belong. But don't come and say, I'm not talking to you again. When you see them, you squeeze your face. Whose face spoil? I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. Because some people would want you to look at them and frown your face. I know that. Like, who are you? Who are you to pepper me? No, 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 no. No, sir, don't be like that. No, if they wanted to pepper you, when you are coming, even if you don't mean it, smile. And when you say, how you doing? How's your family? How's everyone? You're doing okay? God bless you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Call your name and say, Jerry. Choose your battle. You know this thing, part of your problem, why you are busy fighting battles that ego, ego. Ego, ego, ego trip. He just spoke to me in a way I'm going to show, I'm going to. You'll be showing, showing, showing. All this show you want to show is because you're alive. If you sleep in the night and the Lord requires your soul, you will not show anybody anything. You want to show anybody anything. I know. When you look at them and see their, their behavior and all of that, look at yourself and say, if only they know better. They don't know better. I will not waste my time, you know, thinking I choose your battle. Let me say this again. As you are here, before you start talking about people, be sure that you can say it in their presence. Before they will soon come back and say, Shedi is you that went to start talking about me. This is 2024. The ones, the ones you gossiped in 2023, let it, let it go with 2023. You understand? Now that you are in 2024, tell your neighbor, choose your battle. Don't allow those that know how to make you talk. When you finish talking, they will now say, actually, I was there. I didn't even say, Bim. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, choose your battles. So, what you need to do, there are places where you're going to go. Going forward, be looking at everybody. When they talk, they say this was <laughs> Now, wow. <laughs> and then this way they won't talk. They talk, 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 say, hmm. You can agree. This mouth has put you into trouble so many times. And then you want to go again in 2024. You want to open mouth again and start. No, it's not necessary. Choose your battles. Am I communicating? Look at your neighbor again and say, choose your battles. Now, you know the thing that is shocking me? My second thought on this. Remember as you go through to it, choose your battle. Listen, let me tell you, husband and wife, think about it. You're in the, your, hus your husband is getting angry. Maybe body is preparing him somehow. Or maybe something. He has a challenge and all of that. And then he says something. You know you want peace. You know you want stability of your home. Choose your battle. Replying him in ego. No, no, why are you talking to me like that? No, you shouldn't talk to me. You shouldn't. And then, all of a sudden, problem will start that will stretch for one week. When that thing wants to come, ask yourself, is this really what I want? Do I want to keep malice for one week? Choose your battle. So, all you just, sorry, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Even if it, if you ask my wife to tomorrow, she says to me, everyone, that I know how to say sorry. I know how to say sorry. 
Sorry, you. Sorry. It's true. Ministry is hard. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I cannot add anything that will make it harder. Choose your battles. Family, those who love you or those you love, don't fight with them. Choose your battles. You can, you can, you can fight to make destiny happen. And then you come back home and then you continue the fight. Choose your battles. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. And then when you go, you know, all of these things that we're doing, nobody is anybody. Uh, I don't care about what people are doing. I mean, something I, I discovered yesterday that happened. And I'm so excited that the, the, the young woman that they said uh, cooks, wakes up by um, 4, 4 a.m., right? 4 fifth, whichever shop 4 is inside it, to cook for the um, husband. Yes. And then some people wear sabi, pounced on her. Why is she? No, nobody should. No woman should be able to do that. All of you are in the same this thing. And all of that. That's what she chose to do. And the entire world, I'm, I'm happy now. Organizations are giving her too many things. Giving her car. Giving her me. Because she's waking up by all this. And another person went and put it. Say, me, I've been waking up since. <laughs> it's just that I've not written my own. I've been waking, I've been waking up since. My way of trying to say, choose your but everything is not that serious. It's not that serious. You're quarreling with someone, especially husband and wife. You're not happy. Body is full. Your, your, your mind is doing like you're not okay. And yet, at the same time, you want to cover it, you know. And, and then Mali. If you are a spouse here and you can you can keep malice, let me tell you what was happening to um, Mary Magdalene was seven demonic spirits. I'm not sure it's seven that is working in you. I am not sure it's seven that. Yes, is that serious? Because some of you came here and you know the one I don't understand is even the how you love God in the midst of malice. You open Makasha Boda Balaba Meshono dia. Keep quiet. You're not talking to someone. You are praying. What are you saying to God? Now I want to know, what are you saying? What are you saying to God? Leave. That's what the Bible said. Leave that your sacrifice. Go back and mend fences. And you say you are praying. Ah, no, God doesn't. I even wonder how you cope. How you cope with God. It says, it's a difficult thing. And then you say, ah, you know, you're like, and then, then you know, um, <laughs> So many years ago, I remember a man sharing this story with us. And, she said, and he said, Pastor, any time I have issues with my wife, her prayer life rises. <laughs> so the lady enters into the place of prayer. And then he says that he starts feeling very bad. That the lady will just be praying and say, Lord, I see what you're showing me. I see, I see what you're... Thank you, Jesus, your love. I, I experienced that. Oh, glory is here. Glory. Glory is here. And the lady, she, you feel very bad until he will go and beg the lady. And say, my wife cannot be seeing glory. And I'm here. You know, call, he will come and beg the, the lady. It will take the lady days before the lady will argue. So, one day, he said that the lady did something wrong. And I said, I reprimanded her. That next thing she now said, God, that she started praying again. I said, God, please don't release your judgment. Don't, don't release your judgment on him. Don't, don't release your judgment. God, don't release your judgment. The husband said, This one. Judgment. He went and tapped her that please, you should tell God to release the judgment. She did that judgment. Release the judgment. You know, my way of trying to say, Choose your battle. It's not necessary. They walked out of your life. Let them go. I can't fight you. Why should I be? I hurt myself by cataloging what you did for me. Today, I cross it for you. I cross it for you. I say, I cross it for this thing you did for me. You know, go better for you. You know, go better for your children. You know, go better. And have you noticed half of the time? You go still better for them. You understand what I'm saying? 
even your mouth does not have power. So, yes, my way of trying to say, choose your battle. Choose your battle. You can't be, you can't be in an office and everybody doesn't understand you. You are, we are, where offices are opening again. You can't be there and people, everybody has one wrong thing to say about you. It is not good. And you tell yourself, I am one man against, I'm against everybody. I can and if they like, let them be 1,000 and all of that. Choose your battles. And all these people that know how to say their mind. This is 2024. Receive wisdom. In this life, we don't say our mind. We say it to those who we believe will understand what we're saying. Ah, no, 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 I, I belong to that. No, if you do me anything, I'll, I'll just say it the way it is. I'll just talk to, I don't have time. I don't care. Shut up. So many have gone down because they chose to say the way it is. The Bible says a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. Let your words be seasoned with salt that it might minister grace unto the hearers. Am I communicating? And it's important that I say it. I, I can stay on this choose your battle forever. But please, I beg of you, choose your battle. Some things are not worth it. Choose your battles. If you, you are driving and uh, an Okada or somebody in uh, uh, Keke uh, begins to abuse you, you in your car, did you literally wind down your car? Did you wind down your car to be addressing an Okada man? Okada man will say waka, you reply waka. Okada man will say that and then you literally want to come out of the car. I bet you they will beat you. They will let you know that this son that they've been under, that they have an evidence to prove. Choose your battles. Some things are not worth it. You're not as strict as some people. You've been hearing God. You've been going through a process. You've been, you know, when they mistreat you, when they ill-treat you, and all that, choose your battles. It's not worth it. And all that, if it's, they are not too important, put them very distant from you. Remove their memory from your mind. Surround yourself with the people that work and all that. No time to, no time to waste time and all that. When they call you, don't answer their call. When you see them, greet them. You know, ah, sorry, I've been calling you and you didn't pick up. Oh, sorry. It's actually been a busy season, right? Yeah, we're trying to, uh, but you're okay now. Your children are fine, right? Everybody, I'll see you later. I'll catch up with you. People of God, you are not keeping malice, but we don't have to be close. Am I communicating? Somebody help me look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, choose your battles. Say it again like you mean it. Say, choose your battles. Let me say it again. For those who love you and those you love, around them, choose your battles. And I say this all the time. Those who love us do not deserve the worst of our emotions. Do you understand what I said? Now, people of God, do you realize that one other thing that this king was trying to do, he is a king going to fight another king. But there's a problem here. He needed to discern capacity. Whether with 10,000, I can win 20,000. He needed to discern it. To every title you have in life, please add capacity. Let me tell you the tragedy of rejection or the diagnosis of rejection when your title is louder than your capacity. I prefer you without title but with so much capacity. I prefer you showing up and people, the first thing they'll do is to give you a wave of the hand. Who that guy be first? But when you show up, I prefer you being small in your own eyes. I prefer you, let everybody underrate you. Let everybody, people of God, God knows how to surprise and lift up the humble. But if the first time you show up, your shoulders are up there, the Bible says God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Am I communicating? Add capacity to your title. Sir, if a generation wants one, give them ten. 
add capacity to your title. Don't be see There are people you see their profile like this. You'll be, you wish to meet them. When there are people you see, there are things like the way they package everything, they package on social media. You say, wow, this person, if I, when the day you meet them. Some of you are witnesses of what you other than what you got. For every title, add capacity. Add capacity. God forbid. I don't want to answer the kind of pastor that does not have capacity. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, no, there, there has to be that. Otherwise, let's leave it for them. For everything, you must have capacity. Let not anybody ask you questions as it relates to, as a man of God, things about doctrine, things about the, and then you sit there opening your mouth. It's well. You need to add capacity. You see, in the, listen, this is the year right? This is the year of, I mean, it was many years ago when I was still doing a um, secular job, while I was still at the, the, at the UNFPA. One of the things they taught us in one of those seminars, I said that this is the year, that year, that many years ago, it was the year of multiple competencies. So what it means is that you cannot know just your job role. You can't just know your job role. Like if you're HR, say I'm an HR specialist, you cannot just be an HR specialist. You have to know a bit of what those in accounting are doing. You have to know what a bit of what those in IT are doing and all of that because at some point we have seen job roles become extinct. We have seen job roles being merged. We have seen job roles being, so all of those things and you say this is the only thing I know. No sir, add more capacity. Every day learn how to do things differently. Learn how to do me here. I know something so. Oh, yes, those I work with know that Pastor knows too many things. If you say that thing once, I will know. And, and if you do anything, try to chance me on it. You will, you will explain that first one and explain this other one, merge it together. If I feel like there's a bobo somewhere, I'll go and read it, wait for you, so that we can now analyze it. Me here, I am a fake IT expert. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm a quack, but sha, I know that I have an idea. Do you understand what I'm saying? Somebody help me turn that say add more capacity. Can you say it again like you mean to say add more capacity? Say it again to you like, like you mean to say add more capacity. And people of God, remember, the idea behind it, whether he does not sit down first and consult it, whether he be able, people of God, there is capacity and there is ability. You can have what it takes, but do you have the ability to deliver it? Capacity can be knowledge. Ability is strength. So all throughout, do I have the ability? I know there, there are too many people I know can do things. I know this person, this person has the capacity. But what we don't know is whether this person has the ability. When you are done with capacitation, go to the next level of ability. So let me use the life of a preacher. If a preacher can have capacity to deliver, to be this, to do this, to do this. But coming to do the work is now a different ball game. Because you are standing here. There are too many things. You have to communicate. You have to interface. You have to do this one. You are, all of them are in the place called, you have to elicit a response. You have to make people understand what you're saying. You have to use the right hypothetical example. You have to, you have to leave a strong lasting impression in the mind of ability. But you may have capacity without ability. You look like a mediocre. Let me, have you ever done something in your life and you finished it and you left crying because you believe I should have done better than this. The problem is not capacity. I get capacity, but I don't know what happened to my ability. You know that you've been in an interview like this. Whether it is nervousness or whether it is whatever it is, you went there and just started talking nonsense. 
And as soon as you left there, you remember the first question. You remember what you should have said. You, re you remember every single thing. And then you sit back and there. You just feel very bad about it. I remember it was in my first year in the university. I don't know whether I've shared this here. So a young woman, I still remember her name very well. So we finished writing exam. My lecturer shows up in class the next semester and brought her script to class that she wants to read. He wants us to read something. Called one of my classmates, said, come, come and read. Question number two, what's the question? They, they read the question of, out for everyone. And then what's the reply? The girl started writing. I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what comes my way, my life is in your hands. She finished it. She wrote it again. She wrote it again. She wrote it again. She kept writing and she kept writing and she kept writing. Look at the shocking part. So my lecturer in anger looks at her and says, so you couldn't answer a simple question like this. There was no rehearsal of this anywhere. And she says, sir, I know the answer. The man got angry. Said, I will keep failing you till you leave this school. What do you mean you have the answer? You know the answer. He says, sir, I know the answer. She kept insisting. So the girl says, so uh, the man asked her, so what is the answer? She stood up and spoke the answer from beginning to end. In a one split second of sobriety, the man asked her, so what happened? She said, I was nervous. So she was nervous. The only thing that came into her mind was, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. Whatever that will come my way. My... And she used it to fill one page. <laughs> used it to fill another page. Another... That was quite a powerful uh, prophetic action. You know. But it, it ended in failure. My way of trying to say, for every capacity, get an ability. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Do, 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 do you understand that this story was about two kings? Yeah. One king that had 20,000 and the other one. Please, am I boring you? No. One king had 20,000 and the other one had what? 10,000. I want you to always remember this. Kings are not immune from battles. As you journey through 2024, you might be a king. You are not immune for it. So the exciting thing for me about this day is that these guys were battle ready. This one had 20,000. This one had 10,000. These guys were battle ready. Never do business as if there will be no battles. Be ready for it. Hmm. Don't, don't, don't go looking for things as if there, there will be no battles. No, sir. Just have it. Be battle ready at every point in time. You're going to walk into an office and you're going to see a demon that calls herself a member of staff there. Be battle ready. When you look at her reaction, she's not reacting because of any... There's a spirit in her that is trying to disorganize what you came for. Hey, yeah, bad day, Shada. You start getting upset. You're rude. Why are you rude? You're a very rude woman. You're a very rude... No. Begin to speak in tongues. Mati Shanda Bokorosa. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The people and they that dwell in. You can't come and exchange words. There's a spirit that wants to stop what God. Kings are not immune from battles. It's exciting to get married. But it's a level of royalty. I'm afraid to be the first one to announce to you. Welcome to battle. Not because you and your husband are going to staff. I know, no, no, no. That is not what I'm talking about. But guess what? There are territories you are about to take. The devil is watching. Where should I begin from? Is it from childbirth? Is it in conception? Is it if she survives this, can I hold it here? If she survives, can I hold the children here? If she survives, can I hold it? You are in a battle. Kings are not immune from it. Let no king under the sound of my voice feel that because God has brought, brought to me a measure of royalty, then I can go and sleep. No, you're not immune from. In fact, the higher you go, the hotter it becomes. The Bible says, when men shall say, peace, peace, 
so shall sudden destruction come upon them. You are not immune from battles. Seasons of your life when God has given you rest, no, be battle ready. That's why I look at some people, once they get what they are looking for, and they tell you, ah, you know, I'm not, really, I'm not really that steady on the altar. Chai, I look at them and I shake my head. And it's not like they even have robust prayer life themselves. Am I communicating? I want you to understand this as I share the fourth thought. Right? He said he was going to consult to see if he will be able to war 10,000 against 20,000. I love this man. The mere fact that the other king had 20,000 did not stop him. He actually said, I will check. So, men with 10,000 are still meaning, winning men with 20,000. But they have to do it with knowledge. He said, I'm, I'm going to examine knowledge to be able to be sure that can I do this, me with lower capacity, can I face this guy that has a higher capacity? The mere fact that he did not rule it out, that I am I'm not going to win this guy, is making me excited. And I'm talking to everyone here. You are new in a business. You are new in something. I say some people are already established. Leave that matter. Sad that there are those who are doing this business in billions. They are doing it in billions. You're going to do yours in millions. And the truth of the matter is that before April, you'll be doing it in billions. Am I, am I communicating? Come and do your own. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do your own. No, they look face. Am, 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 am I communicating? Push your own. Be the best of what you can be. For whatever it's going to be, if it takes knowledge, if you take waka, if anything it will take, push your own. Say back, say, Pastor, you know, everybody is just there inside. The That's your problem. Is the fact that you're doing this and looking at everybody. Push your own thing. Be your own person. You've always helped others stand when it comes to your own turn. You are the ones that disapprove and disqualify yourself. Men with 10,000 are still reducing men with 20,000. Am I communicating? So I came to beg you. You can, but you're going to do it with knowledge. You can. Don't sit back and say, this thing. you know, Pastor, the reason why my own is not working is that they've gone to all the big, big people. What do the big people not offer that I need to offer? What is it? What can I do that they are not doing? I've shared this many times with you here. That the day I went to be interviewed to work in the UNFP, I know people, big, big certificate up and down. It took the Spirit of God to make me stay back there. Because you know how it is when we in the conference room? Because we waited for a little while, so people started sharing, you know, and, and all they asking, everybody was talking. And I, I did my PhD, and I came back from here. I did my this thing, I did it. I did this thing, I did my this thing here. So, hey, anything you are doing, don't ask me. Don't ask me. And you know what, people? Eventually, they now asked me. I say, what well, they are I tried. I do, and that time I, ha I have phone. It's the, my phone has left now. That time I had phone. Yeah, correct phone. I use phone to and reply them. It's just that my own is in Nigeria. Uh, and, and my own is in Abia State. That's where I got my own. And all of that. And I could look at that look on their face. I say, God, should be I ask you, let these people not ask me this thing. And they are finally asked me. You know. And they asked me, oh, so what, what are your additional qualifications? And all that. I say, additional qualification. I say, I am, that time I have not even begun masters. I say, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking really hard about it. And people of God, we got in, I already wrote myself off. I say, this is not the man, go, go rest. And these people, anything that I want to do, let them do it. However, when I entered, the dynamics of the questions changed. They began to ask me, grassroots <laughs> me that have gone through villages know how to do programming intervention I, I, hey, I opened my mouth I was talking and it was flowing sir there might be 20,000 but you see you with 10,000 
you still have what it takes. Let, there, are, there are grassroots experiences that God is taking you through. They can never gain it. Even if they got a certificate from Harvard, they will never get your kind of experience. Am I communicating? People of God. He says, to meet with him that commit against him with 20,000. The next verse. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage. And I'm going to tie this and desire conditions of peace. I'm going to tie two things together and I will be fine. While the other is a great way off, he sends an ambassador and says, please speak with this person. He sendeth what I will call perception. How you will perceive me. In perception management, we're simply trying to see Packaging yourself in a certain way that if you are not there, people remember you for this. Sir, so there are things you do that create a perception of who you are not. So in perception, man, you'll be able to put things in a way that even if I am not around, this is the way people perceive me. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. So don't let the first thought, because of the things you do, people, that when they perceive you rude, angry, impatient, silly, and people of God, people may forget what you even did for them, but they will never forget how you made them feel. They will never forget. It's perception. They will never forget. How do you, how are you made them? It could be, the, you, can, you can give anybody anything, but people of God, it might just be one kind word, one joke, one nice thing about you. It might be your happy self. It might be your joyous self. It might be just a part you gave someone on the shoulder. People will never forget how you made them feel. Don't say, I don't care what anybody says about me. You gotta care. Do you understand what I'm saying? Jesus had to ask these disciples, who do men say that I am? There are people we don't care about, though. You know, there are those ones who are perpetually, um, do you understand? They are demonic. That's the only way I can describe. They are demonic. But if there are people that matter, they are the people in the same community with me, there are people, no, don't say I don't care. I don't take nonsense. If you do me, you go collect. No, sir. You must understand it's not about, you can know your truth, but the Bible says, right? Speaking lies in hypocrisy. And this is what I say to my people all the time. Don't tell the truth in such a way a lie is believed. Because there's some people who are experts in that. Before they lie, they will put some truth, muscles of truth in it. So at the end of the day, you finish talking, you say you said the truth, but a lie has been told. So don't tell the truth in a way a lie will be believed. Perception. Don't be a nice person and people will perceive you wrongly. And then you say, ah, if it's only those that come to me that know me. If you come to me personally, <laughs> And come to me personally. We don't have time to come to you personally. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. I mean, I'll give you an example. Every Sunday, I sit here, and then the permanent feature we have every Sunday are the choir, people who sing in the choir, and all of it. There are people that you see every time they mount the stage. You don't know them, but you like their energy. You don't know them. They just There's one, one um, sister. I used to, I always tell them, I say, tell that sister, I'm seeing how. And she has the spirit of joy. She do, and she's not very tall like this. She's smallish. She do, she do, she do like this. She do like this. She will smile. She look at another person. She will smile. She will do like this. She do like this. I say, yeah. It's making me happy. Yeah. Perception. People of God, she might not be that nice. Hmm? She might really not be that nice. But the perception she has given me Makes me look every time they want to line up those who are there. I say, ah, she's not here. 
There's another one. In the, I'm talking about those I'm seeing. One fair brother that used to also do backup. That fair, fair, one, fair one. That one is just happy. He's just being happy for no reason. <laughs> for, for the joy of God. Perception. And then I look back and I'm like, oh my goodness. These, these people. And that is the way the world is. It's only God that looks at the heart. It's only God that looks at We, we look at who you are. That's the way we look at Every day, serving God is not strong face. Because you are watching, Pastor, Pastor, I was in the spirit yesterday. And what the Lord revealed to me, calm down. I'm always in that spirit. Do you understand? No, don't be like that. Be nice. Create good perceptions. Make people remember you and just smile. Make people remember you and just get excited. When people remember you, I like the fact that when people, hey, Pastor, yeah, what's up, what's up? How you doing? You're doing okay? Because I want to leave a memory of joy wherever I am found. Would you rise on your feet wherever you are? Would you raise your two hands to God? Your 2024 will be glorious. Your answers will be exceeding. And Roy will do what you cannot do for yourself. I announce it is done. For the Lord said to me when we come for fourth service communion, that I should declare over you three major things. Get on your knees. The things that you can never do for yourself. Try. Things you will not be able to do for yourself at the sound of your amen. Receive it as your evidence. Number two. It says I should declare strange financial doors. He said to me, they will be opening within the days of this fast. Some of you, the Lord will be opening the doors for you because of the kingdom. And the Lord said, I should speak the third one. Establishment and consolidation. In that area God has called you, your feet will no longer be shaking on the ground. You are established and you are consolidated. Can you raise your three loud amen? Amen, amen, amen. Rise on your feet. Eat of the flesh of Jesus. And drink. Drink of the blood of the new covenant. Amen and amen. amen. Would you go ahead and put together your, your offerings, your tithes and your partnership. Let the blessings of those who have honored the Lord with their offerings, their tithes and their partnership be your portion. Amen. Nothing missing and nothing broken. I decree it is done in Jesus' name.